In the last video, we took the equation for the power radiated by an ideal black body, and we rearranged it to solve for temperature. So in this video, I want to use that equation to calculate the temperature of the Earth, or, or what the temperature would be if the Earth did not have an atmosphere. So to do that, we're going to pick apart each of these things and plug it into the equation series. So first of all, there's the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, which is just a constant. I looked it up. It's uh, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8th power watts per meter squared Kelvin. Uh, this is kind of a cool constant in these, in these, uh, in these units because it goes from 10 to the 7 and 8. Anyway, maybe you think that's anything. I don't know. But anyway, that's already sorted. Now let's tackle the next easiest thing, which is going to be its area. This is the surface area of this sphere. So to find that, all we need to do is find the radius of the Earth and plug that into the formula for the surface area of a sphere. So I looked it up ahead of time, and the radius of the Earth, let's just draw it on here. Make it center, radius, radius of the Earth, r, r there, r equals 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. That's the approximate radius of the Earth. Now if we plug that into the formula for the surface area of a sphere, we get the area equals 4 pi r squared. And I just remembered that. You could look it up, or, or you can derive this thing, but we won't do that right now. Uh, but anyway, when I wrote a small r, I should write a big r since that's the r we're using. So 4 pi r squared. So plugging this into my calculator, I get paying attention to my sig figs. So I just have 5.1 times 10 to the 14th power. And this will be in meters squared. I kind of ran out of room here, but it's square meters. All right, so now we can plug this into the equation or, or once we figure out what P out is. All right, so now we have the Stefan-Boltzmann constant here. We have the area here. And finally, we'll, we'll get the, the power out and then we'll plug it all in and we'll, we'll find a temperature without an atmosphere. So let's figure out this P out. P out. So we said in the last video that the power being radiated away from the Earth has to be equal to the power it's receiving from sunlight. So I'm going to write that P out equals P in, power in. So we can break this into three parts. First part is we should know the intensity of the sunlight when it reaches Earth. And this is something you could go outside and measure or maybe you'd want to go into a satellite to, to really measure it very precisely. I'm going to write that as S, and you'll see this in some equations, maybe in a textbook if you have one. S is called the solar constant. It's just the intensity of the sunlight that reaches Earth. So S is right here. I'm going to write the value of S over here in our little value bank. So this is something that's been measured, and it comes out to 1,360 watts per meter squared. So this means in a given square meter, if you go out maybe into space and you hold up a, a panel that absorbs all of the light and that the area of that panel is one square meter, you'll get 1,360 joules of energy every second. That's what a watt is, one joule per second. That's how much energy you'll be absorbing just from the sunlight. Okay, so that's one portion. The next thing we need is the amount or the area of light that the Earth is blocking or that the Earth is, is absorbing. Now the easiest way to think of that, uh, maybe there's an easier way, I don't know, but, but the way I think of it is if you put a, put a screen or, or a big sheet of paper or something behind the Earth, the Earth would cast this circular shadow on that sheet. And I've tried to, tried to draw it here using a stencil. So this is supposed to be the shadow of the Earth. If the light is coming from this direction, some of it hits the Earth and the rest passes by, lights up the screen, and we're left with this shadow. And the radius of this shadow will be the same as the radius of the Earth. So maybe I can draw that here. So this radius here uh, is the same, same as that radius there. I'm just going to write that right in this equation rather than assigning another variable. And that is just pi times the radius squared, the radius of this shadow here. And now we're almost done with this, but there's one more piece we need. And that's a piece taking into account the fact that not all of the light coming in uh, and hitting the Earth is actually absorbed by the Earth. Some of it is actually reflected. So some of it will go off this direction, some of it will go off this direction, some will go, some will go straight back. 
uh, but not all of it is actually absorbed. Some of it reflects off the ocean, some of it reflects off of ice in the northern and southern hemispheres near the poles, and even rocky ground isn't a perfect absorber of light. There will be some reflection. And to take all of those effects into account, we use a quantity called the albedo, which is just a fancy word for how reflective the Earth is. So maybe I'll write some of this down. So reflection is we keep track of the reflection with a quantity called albedo. I don't know exactly why we use that word, uh, but it's but it's the word albedo, albedo. So the albedo is a number between zero and one, and we use the the uh, the symbol alpha, alpha for the albedo, and it's between zero and one, and it it just specifies the fraction of light that is reflected. So it's between zero and one, so a one would mean that all of the light is reflected. It'd, it'd be like Earth was just a mirror, and zero would be the case where all of the light that hit the Earth was absorbed. So it's somewhere in between there. For Earth, the albedo is about 0 0.3, so that means about 30%, 30% of the light coming in hitting the Earth is actually reflected off. So albedo, I'll just write a subscript. Earth, that big E means the albedo of the Earth, equals about 0 0.3. Now to put the albedo into this equation, since this is the amount reflected and we're worried about the amount absorbed, we actually have to say one minus alpha, one minus alpha in our equation for, for the power that's actually being absorbed by the Earth. So 30% is reflected, one minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7, so that means 70% of, of the light coming in is absorbed by the Earth. So that's taken care of by this term, or this, this piece of this equation right here. So now we're ready to just plug everything into this, this T equation here and come up with a number for the temperature of the Earth with no atmosphere. So I'll just rewrite it down here. T equals, all right, so the P out we said is, I'll rewrite it like this, S, uh, times pi r squared, pi big R, the radius of the Earth squared, times 1 minus alpha, which is the reflectiveness coefficient, or the albedo, divided by A, which we said, and I'm just going to write the expression out instead of, instead of the number we calculated. So I'm realizing some things will cancel, which is always nice. Just goes to show you that that keeping things symbolic can often simplify things in the end. So four pi r squared, so big R squared, and then the Stefan Boltzmann constant, so this right here. So we notice that there's a pi r squared in the, in the numerator and the denominator, so we can just cancel those out. Now this is interesting. We're seeing that the temperature of the Earth actually doesn't depend on the radius of the Earth in, in, in this model that we're using here. And that makes some amount of sense, right? The energy coming in depends on the surface area, which only depends on the square of the radius. And the radiation outward also just depends on the surface area. So it's, it's all about the surface. So it really doesn't matter since the surface is proportional to itself. The radius actually doesn't even come into play when we're dealing with the temperature. So I'm going to rewrite this. We'll change this blue. So S, which is the solar constant, which is the the intensity of the sunlight reaching the Earth, one minus the albedo um, divided by somewhat arbitrary colors, but keep them consistent, um, four times the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So in the end, we just see that uh, the temperature of a planet without an atmosphere only depends on the intensity of light at that distance wherever the planet is, it'd, it'd be less for, say, Jupiter or something, and the reflectiveness of the planet, how much of the light getting there is actually absorbed. And then there's also this constant, which is, as far as we know, a constant everywhere. So it turns out I didn't even need to calculate this number, but oh well, what's, what's done is done. But let's, let's actually get a number out of this. So if we put this in, I'm going to use my calculator, 1360, times uh, 0 0.7, since that's 1 minus 0 0.3, divided by 4, and the Stefan Boltzmann constant. And I got a crazy number, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm realizing that that is because I have missed 
my fourth root this entire time. All right, so real-time calculations. So if we put that fourth root there, we got something like 4 billion Kelvin before, which I was like, that seems a little high. But if we put the fourth root there, we take the fourth root, we get uh, roughly 254 Kelvin. Now it should be Kelvin. Let's actually check our units. You should always check your units. Uh, and it actually seems like I haven't been doing that. We get here, we get watts per meter squared. This is a unitless quantity. It's just, just a ratio. So we have, uh, let's see, we have uh, watts per meter squared. And then I said below, I said that this Stefan Boltzmann constant was watts per meter squared per Kelvin. So we have watts uh, per meter squared um, per Kelvin. And, and if we do that, we end up with Kelvin inside of this fourth root, Kelvins, and then we should, and then that doesn't make sense because if we take the fourth root of Kelvins, uh, we get Kelvins to the one fourth, which doesn't make any sense. That's not what temperature is. So it turns out I actually read, uh, when I looked up the Stefan Boltzmann constant, I missed a fourth power on the Kelvin. I did, all right. And maybe you noticed that at the beginning if you're, if you're paying close attention. But see, this is why it's good to check your work. It's to the fourth. And so there should be a fourth here, fourth power here on this Kelvin. We cross out these, these cancel. So we have one over, one over Kelvin to the fourth, which just gives us uh, Kelvins to the fourth. Then when we take the fourth root, we should end up with something in Kelvins, which is, which is what we got. All right, so fun with units. Uh, so this, anyway, this, 254 Kelvin, uh, most people aren't super used to using the Kelvin scale, but in Celsius, let's see, so zero Celsius, zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin, uh, roughly. So so if we subtract 254, uh, or if we subtract, subtract 273 from 254, we get that this is actually negative, in Celsius, it's negative 19 degrees Celsius which is pretty cold, and, and that's kind of what we were expecting. We were expecting a planet without an atmosphere to actually be colder than the planet with an atmosphere. And, and it's not crazy cold. This is, in some places on Earth, it actually gets that cold. Uh, but on average, the, Earth, the Earth's surface is actually quite a bit warmer than this. Cool, so we get that the temperature of the Earth would be negative 19 degrees Celsius if the Earth had no atmosphere. 